repeated constant little bursts of joy through the, the cell phone, the video games, jerking off all day long, taking the drugs, the few drinks, like we think that we're giving ourselves relaxation and joy, but that's the short term view because when you actually stretch it out and you look at the, the long game of what all of those instant bursts are doing over the long, like over a long period, it is nullifying your potential to ever achieve something that is truly great. You're never going to be able to hold your shit long enough to truly enjoy shitting. Now a lot of you guys are going to be in complete disbelief and call me a bullshitter when I tell you that I presently have absolutely zero urge to take any of the drugs of problem. Meaning there's zero chance of relapse, meaning I wake up every day and not one part of my brain magnetizes towards past negative behaviors. And all of my attention has been diverted from the dangerous unhealthy endeavors towards more positive fuel that is propelling me into the direction of healing, growth, prosperity, acceptance of oneself, all of that good shit that we all want to be focusing on every day, I got. And I wanna tell you guys how I got to this point and hopefully you can bear with me as I try to verbalize it. So how did I get from being completely addicted to mind-altering substances to feeling like there's not a single hook in my entire body? The first thing we want to do is ask some questions. You want to ask the questions that elicit the responses that you don't want to hear. You want to ask the hard questions. I found that a lot of us just don't ask enough questions. So it starts off with why was I taking X substance? Why was I doing X action to the point of damaging myself? And what I have learned is the root cause of all these addictions isn't necessarily the urge to transcend our current sober state. It's most often than not, we are trying to hide or run from something that we find impossible to face. Sometimes it can be as simple as feeling really bored and the drug gives us something exciting and interesting to do because we can't stand the feeling of our own boredom. It doesn't have to be this complex thing that you're running from, like some serious trauma from the past. It can be very simple things. I mean, humans love to alter their state of consciousness. We see this in children when they spin around really fast just to feel what it feels like to be dizzy, and they love it. From a very young age, we enjoy exploring consciousness in a multitude of ways. So to say that exploration is inherently bad or sinful or evil would be the wrong um, approach to take. What we want to do is we want to get to the bottom of habitual experimentation or escapism that causes us to have negative consequences in our lives. So what you want to do is figure out what the root cause of it is. And it's most often than not some kind of pain. This isn't news to anyone listening, we all know this, but here's where things get a little bit interesting. So when you actually try and ask yourself questions as to what it is that is causing you pain that you can't face, that's when the real work begins. And that's when you start uncovering some things that you might not be ready to face. So I can only share my own story. And for me, I did not feel like I was enough. I did not feel good enough just the way I was. My normal state was l littered with seeds of insecurity that sprouted into full-blown plants of doubt, filled my brain with this cloudy sap that I couldn't see clearly, and it was like I was constantly planting these forests in my mind of insecure, not good enough thoughts that made me feel like on my own, just how I was in everyday functional reality wasn't enough to, say, achieve the goals that I had set out for myself. Um, so say I used drugs to help me focus. That stemmed from, obviously, a belief. This is a story that I told myself on repeat until I adopted it as the true narrative for my life. So it all stems from this belief that I cannot focus appropriately or effectively enough to reach my goals, which led me to try to fill this void, this problem that I had created in my head. Now I had to find a solution. Now I use different drugs for different purposes because I was so insecure, but if you really wanna 
dissect this and really get to the root cause of where my need to use stems from, it stems from this feeling that I am not enough, which can have uh, roots in feelings of I am not worthy of love. There must be something wrong with me that needs fixing because if things were right with me, then I would be worthy of love and I would be enough just on my own. So the underlying emotion that ties all of these thoughts together is one of insecurity and sadness, if you want to get to the feeling attached to it, because a person who is secure with themselves by nature of being secure, of having a strong foundation, you feel like you already come equipped with all of the tools necessary to tackle most jobs. Now even secure people sometimes rely on some things like coffee if they need it. So it would be really naive to suggest that even the most secure people um, need nothing because when these compounds are used appropriately and, and effectively, they're used as tools just like you would use a hammer when you have a nail that you gotta smash into a wall because have you ever tried to ha hammer a nail in with your palm? It's not gonna f work. Sometimes you need a tool for the appropriate job and that is how I believe these substances need to be treated. But you're not gonna use a hammer for everything. If you're trying to tighten a bolt, you're not gonna hammer that bolt tight. You need different tools for different jobs and this is how I like to view drugs because when you view them in this light, you see that they do have um, necessities in some instances. So now you wanna dig even deeper. So I'm, I'm using drugs because I'm insecure, because I don't feel like I am enough, because I don't feel like I'm worthy of love. And now you wanna come and figure out where these feelings birthed from. Um, sometimes they are attached to a singular traumatic event that you can identify. Sometimes, probably more often than not, it's a collection of what you would call traumatic or just it's literally how you were raised as a child um, and unconscious beliefs that you picked up along the way that you could argue were really out of your control. They say most of what makes up our psyche was created between the ages of what, like one to five? After you're five years old, you're basically like all of your insecurities and the way that you truly most feel about yourself in this environment has been set in stone. It's very difficult to then change a person. So you basically have these first five years of your life where you this, you're very malleable to everything and that's what creates the foundation of the rest of your maybe 90 to 100 years if you're lucky of living. The mold is cast in those first five years. Pretty crazy. So sometimes trying to identify the root cause of you know, feelings of inadequacy, it can propose a true challenge because a lot of us don't remember. It's okay to not know where the feelings come from. Sometimes all you need to do is just identify what the feeling is. Anyway, none of this is news to anybody watching. A lot of us know that we have addictive tendencies because there's some past pain that we're trying to cover up. So let's get to the juicy part. Let's get to the shit that can actually help you. Let's talk about why or what has changed in my mind so that I no longer feel any urge whatsoever to use. And it is because I now see that using these drugs is going to do nothing but push me further and further away from what I actually want out of life. And in order to get to this point, the key thing is you have to want something out of life. A lot of us are in these cycles because the only thing we want out of life is to feel better than we currently feel. And to do that, we know that all we got to do is take that next hit, smoke a little more weed, have a couple drinks. There is some way that chemical intervention can come along and change our state of being in almost an instant. That's called short-term gratification, also known as instant gratification. Now, the key to having a life worth living is to be in it for the long game. You need that hard-earned, delayed gratification of, say, doing a really good job. Anybody who has actually experienced delayed gratification, which is what I consider true accomplishment, the true source of good feelings, knows 
that instant gratification doesn't even shine a f candle on it. Like, like it's, it's abysmal. It's like comparing the light coming out of a candle to the f almighty sun. There's no comparison. One is just a little spark of, oh, that's, that's nice. And the other is, oh. The true joy in life comes from planting seeds, watching those seeds grow, nurturing it, watering it, taking care of your creations until they come to fruition and you pick that fruit and it tastes so good. But you know that it took more than just planting a seed. You had to take on sometimes challenges that you didn't think you could overcome. And the more challenging something is, the, the more obstacles in your way, you know, the more that you have to learn and grow to surpass them, the sweeter that fruit is going to taste. It's just like the story of how taking a shit is so incredible when you've been forced to hold your shit for days. Like imagine that, imagine having that feeling of having to shit. You know those like really bad shits where it's like, it's all you can think about. Imagine having to hold that for days. I mean, most of us couldn't do it. We'd shit our pants. But imagine if you could, and then you finally took that dump like, you know, that point where your legs are shaking, your whole body's vibrating, and it's like, there's absolutely nothing you want more in this world other than to just take a shit. That relief at that moment is the most pleasurable thing that you've ever experienced. Delayed gratification is like delaying a big shit. <laughs> horrible, horrible analogy. Come on, Adam, you can do better than this. Point is, Drugs or looking at your cell phone, checking likes, comments, the little, the little immediate spikes of dopamine. This keeps you in this cloudy cycle of never ever being able to possibly fathom or, or even come close to even getting a sight on what the delayed gratification of actually truly doing something that is important to you that takes mountains of effort means or will feel like when it's uh, achieved and that is the biggest difference between the me when I was addicted to Kratom and the me now. I am not daily looking to gratify myself uh, perpetually all throughout the day because I now recognize that that did more harm than good. That pulled me further away from what I actually care about. That ac actually <sighs> made me miserable. Like we think that we're giving ourselves repeated constant little bursts of joy through the, the, the cell phone, the video games, the, the jerking off all day long, the taking the drugs, the few drinks. Like we think that we're giving ourselves um, relaxation and joy, but that's the short-term view because when you actually stretch it out and you look at the the long game of what all of those instant bursts are doing over the long like over a long period it is nullifying your potential to ever achieve something that is truly great you're never going to be able to hold your shit long enough to truly enjoy shitting in a practical sense what this means is when you have real goals you start to actually get those, well not the same, but similar boosts of instant gratification as you get closer to reaching your goal, as you face the challenges. For me, speaking for myself, I enjoy the challenges. It's fun. Like I don't see obstacles or I don't see um, things that push me on my back as a uh, as, oh, I failed there, I see it as an opportunity for growth. There's no failures, there's just opportunities to grow and learn constantly. That's all that a failure is. So when you, you see it as that, you rework it in your brain as, oh no, it's this horrible thing turns into, oh, this is just a new challenge. And lucky for me, not everyone can say this, I have a very competitive nature. I like the challenge. Bring it on, man. This is a way to use insecurity to your advantage. No one wants to hear this. But the need to prove yourself, even to yourself, can sometimes stem from feelings of insecurity. You gain security in constantly overcoming the battle. It makes you feel more and more secure. Like in a sense, this sounds very unhealthy, but this is how you can use some of these, oh my God, I'm this insecure me. This is how you can use that 
as an opportunity even. Use your faults as opportunities for growth because I can see, oh, I've got these insecurities, but what if I twist and turn them and target them in a way where I can use it as a springboard to transcend it into a security and you do this by challenging yourself. So I'm getting to the point now where what makes me true feel what makes me feel truly insecure is when I don't accept the challenge. That's when I feel worthless. But as long as I'm constantly brave enough to even accept that I'm going to try, I build a little bit more a little bit more faith and confidence in myself. I get a little bit more secure in my capabilities moving forward. And what that looks like in terms of, say, something practical like um, making videos or, or focusing, the more I push through those uncomfortable periods where I feel like I can't concentrate and I just breathe through it and I accept that there's going to be some lulls and some periods where I'm not proud of myself and I just continue pushing, getting back up when I fall down. Every time I fall down, just get back up you slowly get stronger. It's like a muscle. How do muscles build stronger? They constantly have to face inadequacy. The only reason why your biceps get bigger when you do curls is because you challenge it with a weight that's so heavy, you know, the point of getting to failure is, wow, now the bicep actually failed. It couldn't lift that weight. So the body builds back a little bit stronger next time. So now you maybe can do one more rep. And eventually, you can do two or three more reps, which eventually means you can up the weight. And now maybe you only get six, but then next time you push a little bit further, now you get seven, now you get eight, nine, ten. Now it's time to raise the weight again. You constantly have to keep challenging the muscle to keep giving it the opportunity for growth. If you're working out and you stop challenging the muscle, it stops growing. I mean, things can even atrophy. If you stop challenging it completely, it will shrink down to a size that is necessary for the amount of energy output that is needed on a daily basis. And if that means your muscle is no longer being forced to lift heavy weights, it's gonna atrophy and shrink down to whatever its current requirements are. Maybe all it's required to do is lift your wrist and fist up. Well, it's gonna shrink pretty small because you don't need a whole lot of strength to do this motion. Your mind, and goals and achieving things in life, it works in the exact same way. As you slowly adapt and realize that you can take on the smaller things, you always start small, you gain confidence, you gain more security in yourself, and now you can take on bigger and badder things. Now what this looks like in an overcoming addiction standpoint, <sighs> shit, what does that look like? So ultimately, guys, here's what it comes down to. You're not gonna get out of these instant gratifying habits unless there's something out there that's big enough that you wanna chase it. There has to be something that you want. If there's nothing that you want, you're gonna stay in these habits. And like, that's just, people don't wanna hear the truth. They wanna hear that there's always a way out. I don't think there is. So I mean, if I was trying to help someone, first of all, I have no idea how to help someone. I barely know how to help myself. True honesty here. So all I can do is talk about what helped me. And um, what helped me was finding a sense of purpose, which I'm still searching for. <laughs> but no, but seriously, guys, what really helped me was really coming to terms with how unhappy I was staying in the same cycle. The feelings of being in that habitual state uh, got so uncomfortable that they superseded the discomfort needed to change. Meaning when you get so uncomfortable staying the same that the thought of changing is like a delightful thought when it's not as, I can't say this right now, when you're more uncomfortable staying the same than you are making a change, that's when change happens. So I reached that point and not everyone has the luxury of having their entire life fall apart to reach that point as I did. Someone else could be in my position and they could be like, wow, my life sucks. This is a great opportunity to keep using drugs. And that's what I did in the beginning. What happened to me was it no longer even felt good. Like, like, it was no longer pleasurable being in that state because all it did was remind me of how miserable I am. The, the very act of escaping from my feelings 
did nothing but make those feelings get bigger and bigger because I was all too aware that it was the act of escaping that put me in the position that I even was in to begin with. There was no solace to be found in continuing to escape because I identified that as the actual problem. And I set forth to come up with a solution to remedy such problem, which is where we are now. It feels really cool saying this because I don't wake up and I don't have any cravings and I, I feel like I need nothing. And in fact, like if somebody put a table in front of me with all the drugs I used to take and they're like, after this experience, not only is no one going to know, but not even you are going to know. We're going to men in black, wipe your brain. So you won't even know you took these drugs. Meaning now you have the chance to take all these drugs again, guilt free, completely free from your conscious. No one in the universe will know but we're gonna give you the opportunity to have this feeling one more time. I would say no, I would decline that offer. Because that's how little interest I have in escaping right now. Escaping brought me nowhere. There's no joy in taking those little shits. I'm holding it all in for that big dump, baby. That's where it's at. There's more to this because there's also, you gotta find so nature abhors a vacuum, okay? What this means is when you free up space, something has to come in to fill that space. So the problem that a lot of addicts have is now the addiction served a purpose, right? Like it, it gave them a feeling that they wanted to have, otherwise they wouldn't have done it. So now it's like they feel so empty because not only are they void of the feelings that they were going for, but they actually have no new activity to fill in that space for. And here's where the addict falls really short is they're constantly thinking of new activities that are going to give them a similar feeling because they're still searching for that missed feeling that they wanted the drug to achieve. So this is why they always feel like they need the drug because they've convinced themselves that they will never ever have that feeling without the drug. This is why people say you're an addict for life because some people even count down to the hour. They'll be like 120 days and six hours since my last dose. And all that does is constantly reaffirm this narrative. The story that you're telling yourself is constantly concreted that you are an addict because when you're constantly thinking that I am not an addict, your brain doesn't see the not, it just sees addict. And it has to first think of what it used to be until it can then reform it into what it isn't. You follow? You catch my drift, bro? So when you're constantly reaffirming with yourself that you have not taken said drug in this many days, you're every single day bringing back those thoughts of what it was like to take that drug. You are literally keeping those old feelings alive by forcing yourself to relive them every day. And it's no wonder people never actually get clean, like for real clean on, on a real mental, like they might get phys physically clean, but on a mental level, they're always addicts because they haven't told themselves a new story. The narrative has been the same for years sometimes. And you would argue, well, they're doing the best they can. For some people, that's what they need. And yeah, some people, that's what they need because some people don't actually go in and heal the wound. They're constantly putting a new bandaid on it every day. That wound never actually healed for them. It's just 120 days of band-aids. You gotta go deeper. Some of you guys are shaking your head and being like, what does this f***ing asshole know? Wow, he's over 40 days clean. I don't know, I've only been an addict my whole life. It only took every other stint of you know, falling victim to my vices to get me to this point where I'm at now where I can finally see the forest for the trees. Come on, man. It doesn't matter that I've been 40 days clean. It wouldn't matter if I was two days clean. If my mental state was where it's at right now on zero days clean, that would have been it. It would be a done deal. I would never touch it again. If I just used a minute ago and my mental state somehow switched to where it is now, it wouldn't have mattered if I last used a minute ago or if I last used a decade ago. Because mentally, that's where the real challenge comes. It's, it's not the physical dependence. That goes within days sometimes. A week, two weeks, tops. You, your body is no longer like physically, well, it depends on the drug, of course, but for a lot of these drugs, you're physically no longer in the terrible pain. 
the long game is the mental game because your brain is with you for your entire life and the stories you tell yourself if you don't change them if you don't actively write new stories and believe those stories and feel those stories the old ones will run amok and they will constantly program you with old negative thought patterns that will never have the chance to metamorphosize into something beneficial. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter if you watching just took your drug of choice or are taking it as I'm saying these words. It doesn't matter. Because once you reach the point mentally, once you get to that moment in time where you make that decision that this does not serve me anymore. I'm done. I can leave this behind. It's time to move on to taking the big dump. When you get there and you're ready for that big shit, it doesn't matter anything that you did in the past because you're constantly a new person. Who I was when I started filming this video versus who I am now, you're constantly a new person. What keeps us tethered to the past is our memories and the stories that we have playing on repeat. That's the only thing that keeps us in these past habits. Because if you gave someone amnesia, what do you know? All those habits that they used to do would be out the window. They'd have amnesia, they'd have no recollection of them. But when you start exploring time, and this is where psychedelics, I think, had a huge impact on me because they helped me realize just how they helped me see the impermeance to everything um, in our in our culture we believe that we are these um, permanent beings and that the past is this real thing when psychedelics show you that the past isn't real The only thing that's really, like, that's truly real is the moment. This, the present that you have right now is, is really all you ever have. That's why you see people when they're like 80 or 70 years old and they're talking in movies and they're like, oh man, where's the time gone? The time didn't go anywhere. It's always been now. That's why people are like, where did my life go? And, and then they die and it's like they feel like they never lived because it never was any different than right now. You can make the change right now. You can make the decision to stay in the pattern right now. Whether you make it now or later or whether you already made it in the past, it doesn't matter because it's always now, baby. So when you, when you realize just what that means, you, you take full responsibility for how much true power and potential you have to do exactly what you want to do because you realize that there's no future. There's no before. There's always just right now. So what do you want to do with it? I'm going to hold up and take that big shit in a future that never comes. That's what I'm going to do with my now. Hope you guys enjoyed.